All right. Thank you for tuning in to another edition of Workshop for the Soul. Get excited. We're back again. Um, there's been a little little time, you know, between the videos, of which I appreciate because it takes a lot for me to do these. <clears throat> but the idea comes to my mind of being a man, but not only being a man, being a father. As a father, I, uh, I recognize that. And I want to take time out to thank my father for raising me to be the man that I am. Um, Cause that's my dude. So, I mean, fathers are so important. And as fathers, as men, as husbands, as fiancés of, you know, future leadership role models, <laughs> fathers set the way. And no, no other place on this planet is it more important to set the way like it is in your own house. And you cannot set the way until you give up your way and follow God's way. And that's what it takes to be a real man. It's not taking care of your kids. It's not taking care of your wife because you're doing it your way. And if you do it your way, it's not God's way. And that's not the real way. I mean, there is a way to do it. That's a way you can do it without God. There's plenty of men who's, who've raised wonderful children without God. But how wonderful are your children if you didn't give them the opportunity to see heaven? That's the legacy. So I do believe I am first, second, third generation saved man. I wasn't saved my whole life, most of you know. But fathers do set the way. So let's get into it. Let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 5, verse 9. And it says, Thou shalt not bow down thyself unto them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord, thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquities of fathers upon their children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. Wow. As a father, whatever you bow down to or let consume you will visit your third and fourth generations. So if you are not a product of God. If you are not, let's not say, I hate the word Christian these days because there's a false representation of what that looks like. If you are not a follower of Christ, then be careful what you bowing down to because that same thing you bow down to will consume third and fourth generations. And without God helping them, they will fall victim and subject to the things which you've done. So not you, so not only will your children reap it, but your grandchildren and your, and their children will reap it. I'm third generation saved man in my family. Um, my grandfather was saved. My father saved. Now I'm saved. Okay. I, you know, so there's a lineage of true salvation being represented. What are your, what's your lineage? Lineage. I'm sorry. I mean, you could let, leave a lineage of whore. Someone before me left that lineage. Someone before that person left that lineage. You can be lead the lineage of thief. Someone before left that lineage. What lineage are you leaving? It's a third and fourth generation because whatever you leave, God will allow that thing to visit third and fourth generation. Leave a homosexual lineage. Next thing you know, everybody wonder why he 11 and, and acting funny. Well, check your lineage. Somebody before you, especially as black people, we, we find a way to not tell our entire history to each other. So when something pop up, they say, we don't know where you get it from. Like, what are you popping like that for? You know where you get it from. Somebody was there seeing you doing what you did, but y'all swept it underneath the rug. And then when it comes out and that child's child and the grandparents look at it and they don't say nothing. Why? Because they're ashamed. It's crazy. 529. Deuteronomy chapter five, let's drop down to verse 29. Oh, that they were, oh, that there were such and heart in them that they would fear me and keep all my commandments always that it might be well with them and with their children forever. If only the father hath a heart to fear God. Because that's what keeping his commandments is, is to fear God, right? And keep his laws and obey his commandments it will be better 
it, I'm sorry, it would be better and it'll be well with the children forever, to be paraphrasing. So if it's going to be well with the children forever, there are certain generations that don't come across certain things. Why? Because they have a lineage of obedience. Or oh, because one man made the sacrifice for his grandchildren's grandchildren. If you do not have money to pass down, the Bible says money answereth all things. If you don't have money to pass down, at least pass down some salvation. Give your children a shot. It's if that it would be well with them forever. I'm gonna read that again. Deuteronomy chapter 5, verse 29. Oh, that there were such a heart in them that they would fear me and keep all my commandments always, that it might be well with them and with their children forever. What a solid to do your children, to keep God commandment, to guarantee that it's going to be well with them forever. Now, I didn't see that depending on a, a, a statue of whether or not your children get saved or not. There's plenty of saints' children who are not saved, but their parents or their father, father, their parents put in the sacrifice and kept God's commandment, and they're doing just fine. They're doing just fine. Why? Is it promised to their children? No. Mm -mm. But that's the guarantee that you get. I mean, I've been in a place where, I, where, you know, God was beginning to forget my children. And I'll get into that a little bit later. Actually, let's go to Hosea. Let's go to Hosea chapter four. And let's go down to verse six. Only because, you know, as men, the leadership qualities that we have determine what our family turned out, turn out to, to look like, period. Now, you are responsible as a man to set your children on the correct path. But without your leadership, you know, I knew I knew that there was a God and that I could get my life around, get my life to God, and it will turn around for my benefit whenever I felt like it. Which I knew, which you can't get saved when you want to get saved. God has to call you. But still, I knew that it was an option. Some of you are not even leaving your children with a solid option. Why? Because you haven't lived a, a life before them. Um, Hosea chapter 4. And don't worry about it. I'll be back on mothers, wives. I ain't just going to do the men like that. It's a two-part system. So the next <laughs> Lord's will, I, I will, I will flip around to that as well. But Hosea chapter 4, verse 6 says, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee. Thou hast, I'm sorry, that thou shalt be no priest to me, seeing that thou hast forgotten the law of thy God, I will also forget thy children. Hmm. Well, the previous scripture in Deuteronomy says that, that it, you know, if you keep my commandments, obey my laws, it will be well with your children forever. But this scripture says, because you have forgotten the law of your God, I will also forget your children. So there's a two part system to that. That ain't that mercy you hear at your church. You know, it's a two part system because you choose not to be a doer of God's law. because There's plenty of hearers. Because you choose not to be a doer of God's law, your child is forgotten. I seen a time when I was in the hospital, I was in the emergency room, and they knew me by face, and and they knew my children. Why? Because every Saturday I'm in the, I'm in the, uh, I'm in the, I'm in the emergency room. Them people should not have known my face, and it came to me. I knew the scripture then when I was out there getting it in and seeing, talking about some old. Um, you know, I ain't ready yet. And I wasn't. But God let me know why I was in there. It just didn't happen to be that I'm always in the emergency room for nothing. He said, Well, if you forget the law, I saw my children being forgotten. How were they forgotten? They constantly in the hospital. For frivolous things that could have turned to serious things, but why am I there? Why why was it that every Saturday you know, back then I was drinking. So I couldn't even drink because I, I felt like I knew I was going to end up in the hospital. And I didn't want to be that parent wasted and <laughs> can't even turn up on the weekend because uh, my children are going to be in the hospital. I can almost set my watch to it. What? I was I forgot the God, God's law. I, it's not like I didn't know. I knew it. 
We all know it. The Bible says, for the grace of God that brings salvation is appearing to all men. So we all know it. We don't care. Some of us care and go to church and don't care at the same time. All right. So that's how you get your children forgotten. So at the same token, let's look a little further into the family structure. Let's go to Colossians chapter, I want to go down, I want to say chapter 3, okay? Colossians chapter 3, and let's skip down to verse 19. It says, husbands, love your wives and be not bitter against them. That's some heavy stuff. Why would it say be not bitter against them? Because God knows she's going to do some things. That's going to completely flip your wig and it's going to cause bitterness in your heart. So he, he spoke up against it ahead of time. Husbands, husband, love your wives. You got to love them first and be not bitter against them. Well, there's a great chance if you a saved man and your wife don't believe as strongly as you believe, your measure of faith is stronger than hers or she's a complete sinner or even if y'all both say there's a great chance that the devil will use her in such a way to destroy you. Why? Because it all starts with the man. Father set the way. Most women will give their life to God and, and be obedient. Why? Because it's, it's in their nature to follow. But us as men, it's not in our nature to follow. So there's a great chance the devil will use her in such a way to destroy you. And it all starts with just the root of bitterness. Just the root of bitterness. So you have to be careful. Well, what does that root of bitterness do? Well, it destroys the home. If he can get her to get you out of order in such a way that you put, that you stop drawing her in pen, pencil, and you start drawing her a permanent marker, and she got all these boxes around her face because you know how she's going to act. Because there's a system, and the devil has used her in such a way cause you bitterness. They don't tell you don't be bitter for no reason. A wife can do certain things knowingly and unknowingly to make a man bitter. But that's why it tells you to love her first. All right. Um, let's go to Hebrews chapter 12. And I do want to finish that thought there. Because of the level of bitterness, how it destroys your home is by you being bitter to her, she feels that. Not only that, the children feel it. And you don't have a heart of forgiveness because you let a root of bitterness peek in there and it destroys the home. All because he chose to use the weaker vessel. Why? Because once he got you, he got your home. And therefore, he wants God to visit that iniquity upon the same third, fourth, and fifth, you know, even more generations. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 12. Let's drop down to verse 15. It says, looking diligently, lest any man fall of the grace of God, let, lest any root of bitterness spring up trouble you, thereby many be defiled. So just by a root of bitterness, that's a small thing. What, 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 are the, what are the qualities of a root? A root with many stems coming out of it. So just one root. One root grows like these little, these little, I can't, you know, hold the cultural skills are gone. Like, I don't know what it's called, but they're these little stems that come out of the root. Why? That one root of bitterness calls this stem here. You got you got these fraction of branches of little stems coming out of that root. And those, those stems come from the root. So the problems that you will have that will cause the root of bitterness, that can nine times out of ten come with the person close to you because the devil don't, the devil uses strangers, yes, but he uses the people closest to you most times. And all of those problems, all of those stems stem from what? One root. And men, we used they used to say one takes one one female dog to make a dog. Y'all know where I'm talking about. That's